Hey YouTube, it's the Five Star General coming to you from the New York Rideshare Experience uh, channel. Please take a look in the description below this video. You'll see a link to my website. Go check it out. Today I wanted to talk to you about realistic earning potential when it comes to ride sharing. There's two overwhelming points. The first is Please understand that this whole driving when you want to kind of thing, flexibility in your schedule, it leads you down um, the rabbit hole. It's very simple. You must drive when there's a demand to drive. It's not your choice. Yeah, you can maybe catch a ride going into your on your commute into work or leaving on your way home. Is that real money? Uh, I don't know. If it suffices for you, cool. Um, there's a large percentage of individuals who do this, including myself, that do it um, at least on a part-time basis. Uh, myself, an average of about 20 hours a week. Um, and then you have individuals who do it full-time. The point is we're doing it to make a, I'm going to say a significant amount of money uh, that would help us subsidize whatever bills and monies that we need to have coming into our households. So if you're the type of person that, you know, just picks up a ride and occasionally logs on, none of these things may apply to you. If you're in an individual who's thinking about doing this as an alternative to working a part-time job, um, you know, needs to subsidize their income, um, then this type of thing is for you. And the point is, you have to work when the demand is there. Simple as that. If you have a full-time job already, you can't get out for the AM rush. You can't get out for the PM rush. Uh, Friday nights and Saturday nights when the bars are hopping, that doesn't work for you. You're probably not going to make a lot of money doing this. You're probably not going to achieve the financial objectives that you intended to doing this. The second point that I want to make is do not believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. You have individuals on one end of the spectrum that are making $2,000 a week. They're working 60 hours a week. In some cases, even more. I know people who max out on Uber and then work another 10, 20, 30 hours in Lyft. They're sleeping in their cars in order to do this. You have to do what you have to do. And if this is the only alternative, I respect it. The overwhelming point with point number two is that you have to look at all of the variables. When people tell you we're making a lot of money, when people tell you we're not making a lot of money, those variables include the very car that you drive. Case in point, if you're driving a Prius, if you're driving a compact car, even if you're driving a sedan and you're operating on the X platform only, do not believe the hype when you hear these folks saying that I made $2,000 a week driving Uber and they're in SUVs running on XL, Premier, or, or Lyft Lux, or, or any of those platforms. You're not going to be able to compete. As simple as that. The caliber of fear alone, the person that's getting into a car that's running Uber pool is separate and apart from the individual who has no problems paying a buck 20 to travel into the city in a quote unquote luxury vehicle and then tip 20 percent on top of that, maybe even cash. It's just a different clientele. So. The point that I, I am making with point number two is that you have to look at all of the variables. You have to assess for yourself. You can't listen to someone tell you that you can make X amount of dollars or that you won't make any money. The sign up period, whether you sign up directly with Uber or Lyft or you go through a referral code, that's not for the quick hit. Great. It's great if you make a, a few extra dollars in that sign up bonus period. But let me tell you, it's not the way it used to be. When I started, it was $300 cash up front. 
And there was no problem. I knocked out 30, 35 trips and I don't know, 21 hours. And I, I, I walked away with a nice paycheck for that period of time. What you need to do, my suggestion for anyone who's considering this, use that sign up period to gauge your market and or sub market. Use that time to drive whenever the opportunities arise. Try to get in some morning rush hour, try to get some PM rush hour, alternate your days, get your weekends in, days, evenings, nights, whatever. Get a feel for what the demand is in your area. Figure out where's the best places to be. That all relates to tips and techniques and strategies and all of these things that you've probably heard a million times already. Use that time to figure out whether this is for you. Don't walk away saying, oh man, this was a complete waste of time and I'm in it for the last six months and when I look at my checking account, it's just not adding up. I had to get new breaks. I had to do this. I had to do that. Whatever and walk away upset. Virtually every job that you get has a training period. Use it as a training period. You'll come away with a much better experience and you'll be able to make an educated decision as to what you want to do. On that note, I'm going to sign off. As always, stay frosty. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Catch you on the next one.